I knew immediately that was a symbol for William and Mary. And freakishly enough, I knew that 1693 was not the year that they were, uh, that they were, cra- that they were the, um, that they're royalty or that they be, that they were, what do I want to say? Not crowned, but that's what I mean. Coronated. Coronated? Had their coronation. I, you know what I'm saying. Well, if you got a dollar, well, just lousy down. Know that I got rhythm that could suit your budget found. Hey, this is Patrick with Trusty Hucks from Mercantile doing another shop with me at one of my favorite locations, Thrift and Dollar, in Aurora, Illinois, just north of uh, downtown, not too far from where I'm, uh, where I currently live, and a great go-to spot for some specialty items as well as some uh, great deals as they do uh, some color discounting codes uh, with some of their tagging. Uh, so we'll see what's uh, going on inside. It gets a pretty crowded place, and we'll see how much room I've got to actually film inside but we'll see if I can uh, showcase some goodies uh, that I find here at Thrift and Dollar. So showcasing just uh, the first two aisles here get an idea of uh, how I can get lost in this place for hours and the most important sign is today's colors so we get to remember the fat bird fine colors of blue and orange are on sale as well as yellow so always fun to find some discounted colors. So they always have a really good collection of metalware, you know, some good copper, some good brass, and uh, it's always, I always spend some time to see if, uh, a lot of times it's for my own decor, but every once in a while it pays to watch other videos as when you come across something like this. So here in the middle of the copper uh, collection is this plate which initially you would wonder well why is it with the copper is it misplaced but no it is on copper and it's beautiful seagulls uh, done on the plate it's only three dollars and if you look on the edge it's broom b-r-u-m-m norman broom and if you watch george from the antique nomad he talked about these relatively recently when he sold a piece which admittedly have it a pretty phenomenal uh, holder this one does not have the stand it's just the plate itself but they regularly sell uh, pretty regularly sell uh, over 20 30 bucks uh, in some cases over a hundred dollars depending on the subject matter a quick search uh, i did not find this pattern but based on what everything else is selling for, three bucks is a great investment, and I'm definitely picking this one up. And if anyone ever wondered where Trusty's continual supply of coasters came from, here's one of the number one sources. I no longer have my sin carts in my booth, but I still always look at the ashtrays, because sometimes you got some fun things you uh, will stumble across, including this so this is sticks up pretty well even from everything else that's around it uh, fairly distinct style ma hadley uh, which is done by louisville stoneware and uh, this is as you can see an ashtray it is signed ma hadley on the back and they know what it is so they have priced it at six dollars uh, when they do it in white that sale that price uh, never goes on sale uh, so they consider this more of a collector's item and um, if you like something that's white you grab it when you can because it won't necessarily be here the next time you come back uh, when they change colors because white will always be full price and you know the ma hadley does sell well being an ashtray it hurts its uh, resale a little bit they seem to be selling in the horse design, you know, somewhere in the $10 to $15 range. So $6 is a really good price, but not enough for me to pick it up to resell. So this piece of M.A. Hadley will stay on the shelf. What I always forget to do here is look up. Uh, art doesn't sell very well for me because it's hard to ship. Uh, I've tried to sell it in my booth before, um, but they've always got great prices and a great selection of items here. And uh, one item I wanted to highlight is him so you've got this great oh, sorry getting a glare there let's see if i can do this there we go um you've got this great portrait from world war one uh you know instant relative these are the types of things that it's unfortunate when they disappear into estates you know it gets broken up from the family so it's harder to know who some of these people are um it's just got a great look a beautiful frame 
they are asking $275 for it. Um, definitely worth that price. Certainly not something I'm picking up, but a very impressive uh, size and an impressive uh, piece that would make a definite conversation piece uh, hanging on the wall of any home. So now you will discover Trusty's hidden treasure trove within Thrift and Dollar between the creamers and the salt and pepper shakers are the porcelain coasters. So we just have an unending line of coasters of all designs, of all patterns, and to a certain extent all prices that uh, I love going through this set every time I'm here. And I just saw one that I hadn't noticed before. Looks like, I got a little damage on the name, looks like the November bird. Um, this is a Heutzenreiter uh, porcelain. I've actually carried these before. Unfortunately, I'm not going to pick him up because of that damage to the November, but those sell very well and at a very good price. So for two bucks, I would have picked him up in a heartbeat, but with the damage, I'm going to leave him behind. So, you know, when you wonder how do I have coasters at every single sale I offer, well, this is where I can find them. I've also had some good luck in the, uh, board game section, uh, trying to find some maybe rare games or some vintage games and offer those. And I've sold some of those in my booth and some of those in my live sale. But where I tend to have more success is this little poker section over here. They always have a bin of cards that seems to replenish all the time. And then they get into the poker chips and the little poker display, the you know rotating sets. This one is... $8, but because it's yellow, it's only $4, so pretty good price. Um, unfortunately, these are pretty heavy to ship, so I think I'm going to leave that one behind until I open a booth again. But, you know, a little, what is it, plastic or Bakelite, a little chess set. Some more poker chips. What's up here? Got a... $8 on that one. Oh, so we've got another poker set, uh, this time in a wooden box. Okay, you know what? That one I think we're going to pick up. I've not seen a set in a wooden box like this before. And yeah, it's going to be heavy to ship, so maybe I'll hold on to it until I open another booth, but uh, that one's different enough that even though the cards are open, one of the sets is Caesar's Palace. Actually, they're both Caesar's Palace, but they're both open. Um, and they appear to be full clay chips. Pretty much most of the, yeah, all the containers are full. Um, so it's a couple of pounds, but for $4, uh, that's definitely coming home with me. Thrift and Dollar also always has a wide variety of furniture, and I've actually picked up uh, some of the pieces of furniture that I had in my booth came from here. Um, but this is a new one, a, a four-poster bed with the canopy, a crocheted canopy on top. So you never know what you're going to run across when you're at Thrift and Dollar. So for the person who has everything, you can get an antique fire fireman's water hose. Uh, what do they call it? Fireman's water tank and hose and noddle, nozzle. 1895 bucks. I have no idea. Label's pretty gone. I have no idea what era this would be. Uh, it's extremely well made. Cast iron wheels. It's just a cool looking piece. Uh, I've got a spare 1900 bucks. Hey, you could be the talk of the town. Like many similar establishments, a lot of uh, how they come across their inventory is through estate sales and estate closeouts. And so when you find someone who was collecting carnival glass their entire life, you find a table of carnival glass suddenly available for purchase uh, at Thrift and Dollar. And uh, this is an area I'm not particularly familiar with, but just kind of give you an idea. Butterbell for $30. 
Looks like a large sugar bowl for 24. Ruffled pattern with a windmill on the bottom is 18. That's a really pretty one uh, with the iridescent for 15. Probably a small, almost a small punch bowl for 35. There's some gorgeous pieces at what appears to be some really attractive prices. So always good to pop in as often as you can when you find places like this because you never know what they're going to be adding to their inventory. So again, the way Thrift and Dollar divides up the store and their pricing is the white tags are collectibles. So you can see each of them are the traditional collectibles there. And this side of the store and these two aisles are filled with basically white label or collectible items. So crystal and EAPG to your heart's content. Uh, china patterns, you can get some great deals on almost complete sets of china. Decorative objects, uh, again, this is an aisle I can spend hours in all by itself. One of the items in this aisle that I think is worthy of uh, further explore exploration is this um, beer dispenser, uh, European style ceramic beer dispenser, 110 bucks. So it's missing the handles. Somehow these would have pulled just like a a uh, beer tap. A tap. I'm not sure if it's pressurized. I'm not exactly sure how this would work. Um, maybe it hangs upside down. Maybe these turn i have no idea but it's an extremely cool piece and again you just don't know what you're looking for until you come across it here at thrift and dollar so this is one of the areas i wanted to show because one of the areas i specifically came to the store today to see always looking for additional pieces of picard uh, to go into my collection and uh looks like i hit pay dirt uh this time around so you've got the gold pattern You've got the Picard uh, stamp. That's actually one of the older marks on it, so yay. Uh, this one I found interesting because you can see it's crossed out. The Picard mark is crossed out upside down, which means this is a second. So they painted it, but it wasn't high enough quality to sell as a first, um, you know, as their quality Picard. So they sold it but they made sure it was stamped in such a way that anyone who buys it knows that this is not what Picard is supposed to be. Still looks gorgeous um, and uh, still pick it up. I'm not really looking for the creamer and sugar, but I'm going to get them because what I want is the tray. So beautiful underplate, probably possibly for specifically for the creamer and sugar, but it's a little bit big just for the creamer and sugar, but they are selling it as a set. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up these three pieces. This tray will stay in my collection and most likely the creamer and sugar will end up in a live sale. Um, but they always have some great pieces and, uh, you know, fun to look through to see if what I want to add to my collection. So I'm back from thrift and dollar. I visit there. I would say at least a few times a month, sometimes a couple of times a week. It just depends on what my schedule is, depends on what else is going on, and if I just decide I want to freshen things up of what I've got to offer in my resale for Etsy or my live sales. So hopefully you liked the little tour, you know, kind of showing what the store has to offer and probably get an idea of why I like to go there so much. But there were a couple things that I picked up uh, that I did not include in the video. So I'm going to go ahead and do kind of a mini haul video just to show and highlight a couple of the items that I had picked up that you did not see. So I showed one of the areas that I like to check out and there should be no surprise that uh, once the camera was off, I did some official checking and picked up coasters. So one of them, you know, a lot of these start drifting into multiple categories. This is technically, well, actually it doesn't have the hang holes on it. I was going to say it's probably more of a decorative plate, uh, but sometimes the decorative plates would have a way to hang it. So this is really more of a trinket dish or a coaster and it's Walt Disney World. So it's one of those cases where it's probably really not that old. It is made in Japan, so there's probably a little bit of age to it, but it is not Disney 
is not Disney Productions. It's not one of the older labels um, of Walt Disney. And it is adult Walt Disney World, not Disneyland. So obviously this is a little bit more modern than at least what would be available for Disneyland. But it's one of those inexpensive dishes. As mo almost everything they offer at Thrift and Dollar, it was a very inexpensive price. I can turn around and sell this for you know four or five bucks, and they're going to be some, there's going to be somebody who you know just went there, or they're planning their first trip, or their child or grandchild uh, just had their first trip, and it would just make a cute little whether you put it on a stand or just have it sitting on a dresser table, you know, to throw a pair of earrings or something in. It's just a cute little memento that you can pick up <laughs> way more inexpensively than if you tried to buy it from Disney. Uh, so I do like to pick up things like this because it is something that I pretty sure will sell because I'll have a good enough price on it because I got it at a good cost. So I did pick up that coaster, um, but probably a little bit more interesting is this one. So this coaster, which unfortunately, if I could like shoot light at you and not blind you, you'd be able to see, uh, this is a very fine china that is translucent. I can see the three individual floral designs from the back. Uh, because I've got light coming at me. Because this is bone... Um, actually, technically, is it bone china? It's fine china, but I think it's bone china from Minton. And I don't have my little cheaters out. So yes, I've got two pieces and they are bone china. So I do not pick up Minton very often because I simply don't come across it very often. It's one of the highest quality porcelain names, you know, ever. Uh, it's been around for a super long time, and it's a, a lot of times it's associated with mint and tile, which would go on really high-end fireplaces and things like that. So there is, there is, uh, in some cases, the antique mint is obviously the much more desirable, but that name still has a really high quality uh, name recognition. And I, when I see pieces, which again is really rare, but when I see pieces, I will definitely pick them up. And so this was no exception. Uh, this is again. You know, I'm going to say it's a coaster because if you've watched my channel before, I'm a little obsessed with coasters. So I would say this does qualify as a coaster. It would also be more of like a trinket dish, pin dish, because it, it, there, it, there's a little bit of a bowl here as though it's being set it's totally flat, but it's flat enough that I would do consider these qualifying as coasters. Uh, I've carried them from uh, a lot of other brands. I've had Wedgwood. I've had... Uh, Royal Worcester. This one, I believe, might be the first time I've carried a Minton coaster. So I'm super excited to have this one. And because I got to do a little bit of digging, because I don't really come across Minton that often, it does have this back stamp. So hopefully you'll be able to see that upside down. So you've got the back stamp of Minton. does say Bone China, uh, made in England. But if you look at the very top, you will also see it has... A, an incised mark and that incised mark is 1-66 and so this piece was made in 1966 so i that's one of the reasons i love porcelain in general particularly european porcelain is they're almost always marked in a way or they change their stamps often enough that you can tell exactly when a piece uh, was made so i definitely have a piece of vintage uh, minton i uh, did a little bit of digging this pattern actually as a lot of porcelain makers, this pattern shows up on multiple pieces. I didn't get a, a, a consistent uh, answer of how, what the pattern was. It was wild rose or wild flower, um, but it's going to be one of those cases that I will be able to make this. I might put it into Etsy, but I might actually just offer it in a live sale because it, as a coaster or as a trinket dish, it's not a particularly high value item. But again, I got it at a good price. I know I can turn around in a live sale, I'll be able to sell it fairly easily. And I have to really look on Etsy to just see how many others are listed. Sometimes if there's too many selling there, I'd rather just, you know, move it, give it at a good price, move it along and, you know, focus my Etsy time and uh, space on something else. So I did get this piece of Minton. So I was super excited because it's a coaster. But then I also got this piece. And this is, I would say this does probably qualify more as a trinket dish. Uh, maybe as an underplate, but probably more as a dresser tray. Uh, it is the Vanessa pattern. This one I think is a little bit later because it does not have the incised mark with the date. Uh, and the stamp is slightly different and a little bit easier to read. 
Um, so I don't know the age on this one. Based on the colors, I mean, I would say this is still this is a vintage piece. I, I don't know if this is still produced. It's possible, uh, but based on those colors, I do think it's an older uh, an older piece, but probably like maybe an '80s or '90s piece. Um, but I'll have to do a little bit more digging on this one because I found a lot of the and the, most of them were calling them dresser trays or trinket trinket trays, uh, pin dishes. I found a lot of this shape, but I couldn't find this particular pattern. So I need to do a little bit more digging on that. But once again, it's Minton. It's got a high quality name, got good for name recognition. And that's actually key if you're not a reseller on Etsy. And Etsy is a little bit uh, different than eBay. You, It's all about the keywords and you have to manually put in your keywords. And I, what I've discovered is if I don't have brand recognition or I don't have a very specific style or name or something that will basically get caught in search, the items don't do very well. So this one again probably will end up on Etsy, but I might make it for my my live sale. You know who knows. Uh, but I'm super excited because again I don't come across Minton very often, and here I got two. Another item I wanted to show isn't you know for any particular reason to highlight it. It's really more just as a an example or a suggestion that if you have access to a store like Thrift and Dollar you know, a thrift store, whether it, maybe it's just a Goodwill or a, a Salvation Army or something along those lines. Something to keep in mind are note cards. Uh, you know, there is still a world of, a, there is a written world out there. You know, it's, everything doesn't necessarily have to be tied to email. And I do check things out when I go to Thrift and Dollar and I go to Goodwill. I will look to see if they have some inexpensive uh, note cards. This happens to be sealed, but that's never a requirement uh, because basically, I have custom printed business material, so I've got custom printed thank you cards, I've got you know gift cards, I've got different things that I use for when people buy from me. But on occasion, I will sell something that literally is maybe it's a postcard or it's a, you know, I just sold a series of cigar labels, you know, something really small that I really, the postage is just sending a letter. And I did not create enveloped cards for my, trusty huckster mercantile brand. So I will pick up things like this. So what you will find a lot of is usually you run across, they're all invitations. And I have, when I've gotten into a pinch, I have considered just buying it and just say, hey, it's vintage. Uh, but I do try and look for, you know, empty cards or thank you cards. So I can include it as part of a thank you for your order. It's just one of those cases, keep an eye on it. This one, I don't know, uh, you know, it's got a UPC, it's got a barcode on it. I don't necessarily know how old these are. These, I don't think they're brand new, but I just, they're certainly not old. I have been lucky and been able to find like really cool 70s and 80s cards. And that's kind of fun because since I'm selling vintage, it's kind of fun to put it in a vintage card. So I do prefer those, but just keep that in mind. In, in my local Goodwill, the note cards are kind of in a separate section. So you really have to go over there to see them. And you may not think to ever look. So sometimes you can find birthday cards. I bought a box of cards thinking they were blank inside. They were all sympathy cards, so do pay attention. Um, I'm not gonna send people sympathy cards, but uh, you know, just one of those fun items that you may not think to look for in a, in a thrift store. You'll be, you'll, you might get lucky because I think this is a box of 15 and I wanna say I paid 60 cents. So great uh, find for me because it'll be a perfect item to mail off when I send something that requires an envelope. The last thing I want to show is probably the favorite item that I picked up during uh, this trip to Thrift and Dollar. And it's probably one of my favorite items that I've picked up there in quite some time. Not necessarily the most valuable, but at this point it's become one of the more intriguing items and it is this uh, pottery porringer. So I, yeah, I can't really reach it from here, but I do, I have pewter porringers. And so porringers are basically just this little handled bowl. You know, people have called them many different things. They say, oh, they're bleeding cups. You know, everyone wants to have some interesting name. The only way it's ever gonna be a bleeding cup is if there's lines in the middle and the inside that actually give measurements that would make it a bleeding cup. And those are actually really valuable. Uh, this is pottery, and to be honest, I've never seen a pottery porringer. So what I, and this is one of those cases that you just, you learn things as you go along, you pick up really weird information, and this is one of the cases that when I saw this, I knew immediately that was the symbol for William and Mary, 
And freakishly enough, I knew that 1693 was not the year that they were uh, that they were cra- that they were the um, that they were royalty or that they be- that they were. What do I want to say? Not crowned, but that's what I mean. Coronated, coronated, had their coronation. I, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, it's 1693. That is not when um, they began to reign. Let's put it that way. 1693 is when William and Mary College was founded in Williamsburg, Virginia. Uh, admittedly, I know this because the Huckster Helper was accepted to William and Mary for undergraduate, and trust me, we had severe conversations about my desire to have her attend William and Mary, and she did not. But we do not need to rehash those. Uh, anyway, so this is a piece that I'm like, okay, so it's something from William and Mary, it's something from the time that it was founded, but what is it? There's no way this is from 1693. So I started doing a little bit of digging, and it is a tin glaze, uh, you know, more commonly it's a, f- a faience, a faience glaze. It's just a tin glaze, uh, so it's not majolica, which is more of a lead glaze. Uh, it kind of looks looks like Delft, but it's not the traditional Delft look, uh, but Delft also uses a tin glaze. Uh, and then this one is marked on the back with a, I guess, a signature. So when I look at that, I read it as I... X E. That means nothing. I can't, I haven't been able to Google it. I haven't been able to uh, Google search it or you know, Google lens it. I've not been able to image search any, the, the, the pattern itself. The crown pattern actually comes up fairly often. And they're actually a crown pattern with the William and Mary uh, cartouche that also comes up. It's, sometimes it's a little bit different. The Rex, the R, or you know, for the Regency, that is not always in the middle. Uh, sometimes it's on the end. But the M and the W, you know, so there are things that look kind of like this. But I can't, a lot of the ones that look like this truly are 17th century pieces. I'm, there's, I, I cannot believe I have a 17th century piece. I just, I just don't. Um, and the fact that there's initials on it makes it, to me, seem like this is an artist's signature, which would have been far more common in, a, in, a, in the 20th century. So, you know, maybe it was for the 300th anniversary of William & Mary, so it was done in 1993, but then I would think I would have found more pieces. And whoever this artist is, I would have thought I would have found, you know, that this artist did this IXE, that it would be on other pieces as well. So I'm kind of striking out on this. So I really like this. I'm gonna try and do some more research on it. In the the world of thrift and dollar, I paid up for this. This was one of those white labels that was not discountable. So they even recognized it as a collectible. Uh, I have no concerns that I'm not gonna be able to get my money back, but I, because I personally have an affinity to William & Mary, I personally have an affinity to Williamsburg, I would like to learn more about this and then be able to sell it properly. Because if it is a commemorative piece for William and Mary, I would actually want to promote it as that. So it actually goes into the hands of maybe a William and Mary alum. So if you know any information on this or can direct me somewhere to find out more about how these pieces are marked, uh, you know, the blue ink in some ways does look like some of the way the signatures were done on Delft pieces. So I'm not saying that it's not Delft, but I'm also not saying maybe this was made 10 years ago. You know, maybe this is still available in the Colonial Williamsburg shop. I have no idea, but I cannot find it. And again, if it was something that was probably in the William and Mary shop or Williamsburg shop right now, I would think I would find it. It would, you know, it would show up as something available. So the fact that I cannot find this shape and I cannot find this exact crown does make me believe that I might have something special, not necessarily that's super valuable, but I want to find out more information. So if you know anything, I'd really appreciate hearing from you. So that's it. That's my little rundown on Thrift and Dollar. So again, it's one of my favorite places, at Thrift and Dollar in Aurora, Illinois. It's on Route 31, uh, north of downtown. Uh, north Aurora and Aurora well, not surprisingly, are actually very near, near to each other. Uh, although West Chicago and Chicago are not. But anyway, uh, they do butt up against each other. And it's worth noting, if you've pieced together some of the videos that I've done in the past, there's just this concentration of these great vintage and antique stores all located in 
the North Aurora, Aurora area. So there's the Rustic Fox, where I used to have a, a, a booth. There's Vintage Marketplace, where I also used to have a booth. There's Past and Present, which I did a video of and I'm considering having a booth. There's Warehouse 55, which I am on the waiting list for a booth. Uh, and then Thrift and Dollar. So you know, each is gonna give you slightly different um, focus, slightly different things to choose from. But Thrift and Dollar is effectively a thrift store, and so it's not going to be as curated as some of those other uh, locations. But in almost any case, your prices are going to be a lot less because I will just say, as a vendor at both Vintage Marketplace and the Rustic Fox, I'd go to Thrift and Dollar to buy the stuff, and then I'd clean it up, you know, take off the labels, put on my own label, and put it in the booth. So you know, it's if you're willing to do some digging, and I will tell you, digging is sometimes the key. There you you hear you'll you'll hear you know piles of, of plates tipping over. Uh, yeah, it's there's it's definitely a, a, a hunter's paradise. That that it's overwhelming to some people. I've uh, I've been with people and they have felt overwhelmed. They only wanted to do one aisle and then they needed to leave because we spent an hour in one aisle. It, you know, not everyone's made up for that. I kind of have a different approach. Every time I go, I focus on a different area. You know, it's it's. I find it fun because I do I do like the digging, and then I do like the research. So then I like when I find something, and then I can go home and find out a little bit more about it. And you know, it's just a lot of fun. So if you're ever in the Aurora slash North Aurora area, which is in the far western suburbs of Chicago, make sure you uh, check out all of these places. So thanks a lot for joining the video. I appreciate your time. If you've gotten this far and you're not a subscriber, I really would appreciate you subscribing to my channel. Uh, it does make a difference when YouTube recognizes that people actually value my content. Uh, so give the video a like, maybe throw a comment in there, tell me what you liked that you saw. Uh, if you have any information about the Porringer, definitely would appreciate that. Uh, share it with your friends. Whatever you do, those little things, they may not be meaningful to you. It does make a difference, and I do appreciate any support you can give my channel. So thanks again for all of your time. Uh, thanks for spending your time with me and putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. Well, show me a sign if you're wishing me to stay. Otherwise, I say goodbye and finish out the day. And that sunrise in the morning and you got nothing to say. Oh, that's when I'll be headed on my way.